All right, we're going to talk about the inverse functions for exponentials. Um, and uh, just do a quick recall of what it means to be an inverse. So if we have a function g, and we have another function we'll call h, uh, h is the inverse of g if I compose these two in either order, I get g of h of x is just x, or h of g of x is equal to x. Uh, another way to think about this is that if y equals g of x, then if, let's see, if I take h of y, that has to be h of g of x, h of g of x is just x. Then I can think of these two statements as being equivalent. y equals g of x, then x equals h of y. And likewise, I can turn this around and basically get the same result if I focus on the uh, y equals g of x and get the same thing here. Okay, uh, with that in mind, we're going to turn our eyes towards the idea of the exponential. And the first question we should ask is whether or not the inverse of the exponential exists. So, I have an exponential like this. We saw there's two cases. In one case, if a is bigger than 1, we see rapid growth like this. Otherwise, if a is less than 1 and greater than 0, we see what we call exponential decay. Now, in either one of these cases, it's important to note that there's, these functions are one-to-one. -one, right? There's no place where I can find two values of x that give me the same value of y. So these things are one-to-one, -one, which means the inverse exists. Okay. So now that we know the inverse exists, we've got to try to figure out what it is. Unfortunately, trying to get a nice function to describe that is very difficult. And uh, we're not even going to try here. But what we're going to do is we're just going to define it, and we're going to make use of it because uh, this function is defined and it's out there, it's on your calculator, it's on computers. And what uh, we're going to call this inverse is of the exponentials, we're going to call it the logarithm. Okay, so what does that mean? Define my uh, uh, exponential function. The notation here is a little awkward. It's what we're stuck with, unfortunately. So in this case, the exponential depends on this number a. Whatever that number a is, that's going to define our inverse. So the notation we use is we say log base a of x. Okay. So the inverse is going to be defined to be that thing. So what does that mean? That means if I take log base a of a to the x, I get x. Okay. And if I take a and raise it to that, I get x. That comes straight from the definition of the inverse. So if I compose these things, if g of h is going to be a raised to the h, or a raised to the log base a of x, it's just going to give me x by definition. Okay? So uh, in terms of another way to say this exact same thing, so this is basically the same thing here. If y equals a to the x, then the log base a of y equals x. Okay? And these are basically equivalent statements. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's think about what this new function looks like, and then we'll try to uh, use some of these properties to solve it and work with it. Uh, in terms of the definition, this is in your book, and it's a common way to think about it. But it's very important to be able to think about it in these terms because in practice well, often what we do is we compose these functions as a way to simplify expressions that look like this. Mm -hmm. When we get into some of the properties of logarithms, we'll see how we do that. 
So this is what uh, is in your book, and you see this in many other sources. But this is uh, just as important, if not more so. Okay, so in terms of what this function looks like, so let's assume A is greater than 1, just for simplicity. Okay, and if I graph y equals a to the x. So what is this point here? This is going to be the point 0, 1. So now for the inverse, for the inverse function, I've got to be able to switch that, and that means that the point 1, 0 is going to be on my graph. Okay. And let's see, what are the, what's another interesting point? Well, when x equals 1, then I know that the point the y value is going to be a, because this is going to be a to the 1. So that means when I come out here to a, then the point a1 is also going to be on this thing. Okay? And let's see, now what happens here? As x gets very, very negative, the y gets closer and closer and closer to 0. So that means as my, for the inverse, as the x gets closer and closer to 0, the y value has to get closer and closer to minus infinity. And I'm going to get something that looks like that. So this is the function y equals log base a of x. Okay. So let's see if we can look at this algebraically and give us a little more meaning. But it's important to recognize that in terms of the domain, the domain for the exponential is going to be all real numbers, and the range is going to be all positive numbers. For the logarithm, the domain then is going to be all positive numbers, and the range is going to be all numbers. Okay. All right, so let's look at some uh, examples and try to see if we can make some more sense out of this. Okay. All right, so I want to know what's the log base 10 of 1,000. Uh, so what does this mean? Now we're defining the log to be the inverse of the exponential. Let me do this. So we're thinking of this as a particular y value. So this is my exponential function. In this case, my y value is going to be equal to that. And I want to find the value of x that's going to make this true. So 10 raised to what gives me 1,000? But notice, this is just 10 times 10 times 10, or 10 to the third. So therefore, if I raise x to the third power, I'm going to get the 1,000. So, right? um, another way to think about this, in terms of operations, is the following. And this is a very important way to think about this, is I have that, and I want to try to figure out what's the value of y here, because this is the inverse of 10 to the uh, y, sorry, let me keep our values here, or let's call it 10 to the x, if I raise both sides to 10, to something, so this is 10 raised to this, this is 10 raised to whatever I have here. Okay. Then, because these are inverses, I'm composing inverses, 10 raised to this function just gives me that thing, and I'm stuck back where I was before. So 10 raised to what power gives me the 1,000 is an equivalent way to look at this. Okay. So now thinking about this in terms of functions is going to be a very important thing for us to, to work with later. And when we start composing functions, it's going to make things nice. 
Okay, so let's look at some more examples. Okay, so the next example. I know that 3 to the x is equal to 7. I want to know what is 7. So in this case, I can't get up to there, so I want to somehow bring this out. In this case, I think of this as an exponential, a to the x. My a is equal to 3. So if I take the log base 3 of both sides, and I can do this because they're both one-to-one -one functions, they're both invertible, and log base 3 of 3 to the something is just the something of composing inverses. So the answer is log base 3 of 7. Right? Okay. Let's look at another example. It's a little more involved. So log base 5 of 2x plus 1 going to equal 1 plus log base 5 of 1 minus x. Okay. And the question is, is what's the value for x? Okay. So let's see here. I will need to use the inverse of log base 5 to tr make that function go away. And the inverse is going to be taking 5 raised to the something. Right? So my base here is 5, so I'm going to raise both sides to the power of 5, and I'm going to hope the magic of inverse functions is going to work out here. So I get that. Okay. Now here, life is good. 5 raised to the log base 5 of something, these are inverses I'm composing, so that's just going to be 2x plus 1. Now, this is not so simple. I'm not composing the inverse because this is this function 1 plus log base 5 is not the inverse of the exponential. So I have to use properties of exponentials to try to uh, change the way this looks. So I can think of this as 5 to the 1 times 5 to the log base 5 of 1 minus x, right? Because when we multiply, we add exponentials when we have the same base. This I can now handle. So let me bring this down. This is 5. This now is 5 raised to the log base 5. Now I'm composing my inverses. So I can do that. And at this point I have a standard algebra type problem. So notice I started up here. I composed the uh, inverse of the log everywhere. I had to simplify some things or change the appearance so that I could isolate this so I could get 5 raised to the log, base 5. And now let's see, I can distribute the 5. I'm going to get all the x's on one side. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add 5x to both sides. If I do that, I get 5x plus 2x is 7x's. This goes away. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. All right, so now I get minus 1 plus 1. 7x equals 5 minus 1 is 4, or x equals oops, 4 sevenths. Okay. Now I need to be a little bit careful here. The reason I need to be careful here is the domain of my original function is all positive numbers. Uh, so if I'm looking at log base 5 of something, the domain is all positive numbers. So in terms of the numbers I plug into here, I can only put in a positive number. Because I composed here with an exponential, i got to be a little bit careful in that it, it hides the underlying log, and it's possible for me to get a number here that may not work in the original thing, because exponentials can take any kind of number. So I need to go back, and I need to look at 2x plus 1. That's going to be, what, 2 times 4 sevenths plus 1. It's going to be, what, 8 sevenths. And 1 is 7 sevenths. So that's 15 sevenths. All right, so that's okay. No problem there. So I can take the log base 5 of that number, because that's a positive number. Now I've got to look at 1 minus x. 
it's going to be 1 minus 4 sevenths. So the common denominator is 7. So that's 3 sevenths. So the number I'm plugging into here is 3 sevenths, and that's fine. And both of these numbers fit well in the original equation. Okay, All right. so last thing, I just want to talk about some notation here to reiterate this, because this part of what makes this difficult is the notation. So oftentimes notation can hide ideas, so don't let that throw you. So in terms of the notation, we introduced a new function, log base A, the inverse of a to the x. It's a function and we can compose this with a to the x in some, some circumstances excuse me, to make things either, easier. Sometimes you'll see this without an a. So we'll just call this the log. This is sometimes called the common log. And it's used often enough that we get lazy and just leave off that number. And if we leave off that number, we assume it's base 10. And then just like with exponentials, we have a special number e. So if we're going to use log base e, we're going to call this the natural log. And that's going to use the base, that 2.718 number that we've used before. Right? So this is ln. It's called the natural log. And just to give you a quick example of the natural log, we we'll do one last example. Okay? So for this last example, oops, that should be equals log of 4 divided by x. Okay. Um, so let's see, I've got the, the number I'm trying to find is x. The problem is, is it's it's a function of something that we're comparing. So all I know is the output of these functions is equal, and I want to try to get at these numbers on the inside. Okay, so I'm just going to compose these with its inverse, do some uh, manipulations, and do some algebra, and hope I can solve. So in this case, the inverse of log, natural log is the natural exponential. So e, I'm going to raise everything to the power e. e to the log of something is just the something. So that's fine. All right, so this is not e raised to the log of something, right? This is something different. So I'm going to try to do the same trick I did before. And I'm going to use the, uh, the idea that e to the a plus b is e to the a times e to the b. So there's my a, there's my b. Now, I can take advantage of the fact that that is the uh, inverse. So this becomes 4 over x. So e to the log of something is this the something. I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And I get that. Now I've got to be a little careful. If I, take the, if I try to solve this, there's two solutions. It can either pot be positive or negative when I take the square root. And so now it's possible that both are solutions or just one is a solution, or neither. So I've got to be a little bit careful and go back. Now if I look at the negative square root of e cubed times 4, that is not going to work because uh, log of that number can't work. Can't can't be done, right? So that's outside the domain, so that one is out. And if I look at x equals the positive square root, then when I take the log of x, right, that's a positive number, that's okay. And if I look at 4 over x, I get a positive number there, and that's okay. So here, My answer is that one number. 